So today we talk a little bit more in depth about angles and their measures and some different ways that we actually notate the measurement of angles. First, let's start with that definition of an angle. Two rays emanating from a single point, thus the vertex. The ray that we start with is called the initial ray. The ray that we end with is the terminal ray, thus making the angle in between. Now, angles can have both positive and negative measures. If we start in what's called the standard position, that's on the positive x-axis, call this the standard position. And we rotate in a positive angle measure, that means we're rotating counterclockwise. If we start in the standard position and we rotate in a clockwise direction, that's known as a negative angle. Any two angles that have the same ending ray or terminal ray are called coterminal angles. So as you can see, I've got a whole mess of coterminal angles in here. We have an angle of 55 degrees, which we obtain by rotating in a counterclockwise fashion. And that's a coterminal angle with negative 305 degrees. Notice I'm rotating in a clockwise fashion. 305 degrees and that puts me at the same terminal ray as the 55 degrees. Likewise, if I were to take and rotate 55 and then go 360 degrees around, that's a full circle, I end up right back on that terminal ray and adding 365 degrees to 55 gives me a positive 415 degree angle. And remember, that angle just means we're rotating more than once. So in general, if you want to find a coterminal angle, you take and add or subtract 360 degrees to an angle measure. So in this case, I want to find a positive and negative coterminal angle for each of the following. Positive coterminal angle, I take 35 and add 360 degrees to it. For that matter, I could add 720 degrees and get the same thing. But in this case, I have a total of 395 degrees. That's my coterminal positive. And then if I take 35 minus 360 degrees, that's going to get me negative 325 degrees. Again, we can do the same thing over here, add 360 end up with 621 and once again subtract 360 and get negative 99 now usually we're used to measuring angles in what we call degree form Today we're going to talk a little bit about something called a radian measure. And what a radian measure is, is it refers to an angle's measurement relative to its distance or arc length around a circle. So rather than an opening that we're used to here in terms of degrees, we're talking about a part of an arc length. So this outside part of that circle. We know that the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. Some of you will know it as pi d, but we usually use 2 pi r. And in a circle where the radius is equal to 1, we call that the unit circle, the circumference is 2 pi because our r value is 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to find radian measures using what's called an intuitive approach. I know that if I have a, let's call this a, a unit circle if you will, so we'll call it our radius 1 in this case, and I know if I have 0 degrees, all right, I know that's also 360 coterminal. If I go all the way around a circle, that's the circle circumference. 
and we just found out that if I have a radius 1, the circumference, is equal to 2 times pi times that radius, or 2 pi. So this is a radian measure. And I can say that 0 degrees is equivalent to 2 pi radians. Now, if I were to say that one time around the circle is equivalent to 2 pi radians, then half that circle would be half of 2 pi, or pi. So 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. Now, let's keep in mind, this isn't one radian. It's pi is known as 3.14. So that's 3.14 radians is equivalent to pi radians. Now, if I take and I've gone halfway around a circle, and now I decide to go half of a half, which is 90 degrees, then 90 degrees is half of pi, or pi over 2. The next question I want to ask myself is relative to this value of 180 degrees, which is pi radians, how does 30 relate to 180? Well, 30 is 1 sixth of 180. And if I know that, then I can say it's got to be 1 sixth of pi. So this is pi over 6. Likewise, 45 is a quarter of 180. And a quarter of 180 is the same thing as a quarter of pi, so this is pi over 4. And finally, 60 is equal to a third of 180, which is the same thing as pi over 3. Now, let's just do some counting. Like I said, we're going to do an intuitive approach. If I go by 30s, I'm going in sixths of pi. So here's 1 sixth. 2 sixths is 1 third. 3 sixths is 1 half. 4 sixths would put us 30 more degrees over here, and 4 sixths is the same as 2 thirds. 5 sixths is right here. 6 6 is 1, 7 6 is 30 more degrees away, 8 6 is 30 more degrees away, but 8 6 we know is 4 thirds, 9 6 is 30 more degrees away, which is 3 halves, 10 6, which we know is 5 thirds, 11 6, is here. So we've taken care of all of our sixths, which means we've also gotten some thirds as well. And likewise, let's go by fourths. There's one fourth, two fourths, and remember we're traveling in 45 degree increments. Three fourths would be right here. Four fourths is one. Five fourths. Six fourths is three halves and 7 fourths puts me right here. So what I've done is I've created a whole bunch of equivalent radian measures for degree measures on the circle. And we're using some special values of 30, 45, and 60 degree multiples because of the fact that we're going to use these values later and we know that 30, 60, and 45 have something to do with special right triangles. It would be good of you to know all these equivalents as soon as possible. Now another way to convert from degree to radian measure or radian to degree measure is use this simple proportion where we say the radians over pi are equivalent to the degrees over 180 degrees. So, if I want to convert 70 degrees to a radian value, I take the degrees 70 over 180 is equal to my radian value over pi. Cross product, or not even cross product, just solve for your radian. 
radian is equal to 7 pi over 18. Likewise, 248 over 180 equals the radians over pi. I multiply by pi and reduce and I get 62 pi over 45 is equal to my radian value. If I want to go the other way, I take my radian value over pi is equal to my degree value over 180. Multiply by 180, reduce these pi's so I have 5 eighths times 180 which gets me 112 and a half. You can do the same with the 11 pi over 4. Put that over pi. Set it equal to the degrees over 180. Do the multiplication once again. The pi's reduce. So I have 180 times 11 over 4 is equal to my degree value, which is equal to 49.5. So now let's talk about certain angles in a circle. We have a central angle, which is basically an angle whose vertex is the center, and the two rays intercept the circle itself. The arc length, this piece out here, which is kind of like a radian measure as we know it, all right, is equivalent to the variable s and s is equal to, that the arc length is equal to the radius times theta, but it's very important that you put theta in radians. So, if I want to find the measure for arc PQ or this, I have to take, remember the arc looks like this, measure of arc PQ is equal to the radius, which is 144, times theta, but we know theta is in degrees, so again we do our conversion. We take 260 over 180 is equal to our radians over pi, which is equivalent to 13 pi over 9. We'll do that multiplication using the pi on our calculator and we get roughly 653.45 units as the measure of our arc. This last problem is a little trickier. It says you've got a bicycle that's got a front wheel with a diameter of 24 and a back wheel with a diameter of 60. So, if that's the case, you've got some kind of situation like this. And rather than using diameters, let's go ahead and call these radii. So I've got a radius here and a radius here. And we know that this guy on the small wheel is 12 and the big wheel is 30 and we want to know what angle does this circle make the front wheel if the back circle makes an angle of 12 radians Now, in order to figure this problem out, we've got to think about a couple of things. One is this wheel is going to turn a lot more than this wheel because this wheel is bigger. So in the distance this guy travels all right, is going to be the same as this distance. However, this guy has to move less to travel the same distance because the wheel is bigger. So knowing that, the arc length 
of this back wheel, we'll call this S back, is equal to the arc length of the front. So the arc length of the back is going to be the radius, which is 30, times the degree measure in radians, and that's 12. Now the front, we know, has an arc length equivalent to 12 times some unknown angle. So this is basically just a direct proportion. So, and it's very easy to see what the answer is going to be. Theta is equal to 30 radians. That's pretty much all we've got. Make sure you do your lesson summary and connect that and we'll get back to you tomorrow.